Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, yeah, it's the Ramble. My name is Alex and we're here until midnight tonight. Hey, guess what? No Phil tonight. No Phil tomorrow night. No Phil. That's fine. <laughs> it's great. I know everybody out there is going, yay. Yay, I, I just do it because I'm lazy. You know, because I, I, right now I've, I've committed myself to talking to you directly for about 25 minutes, and I haven't done this in quite a while. Mainly because I'm just so tired by the time I do the show every night. I mean, I really wish, I wish this were an afternoon show. I think it really should go to being an afternoon show because I'm not as tired, you know, like an hour every day uh, during the day. But then... What would happen to the Monday show, which has gotten very popular, the pop-up show, because I don't want to do anything that would change the, the, uh, the, the DNA of that show or the uh, ecology of that show. Gee, yeah, that's a nice way of putting it, isn't it? Anyway, so we're here, and uh, uh, I'm, uh, again, as usual, I'm tired tonight. At the beginning, I accidentally had my picture on the screen uh, until I realized that I did, and then I changed to the other picture, and, you know, things like that. I get kind of you know, goofy. Is that what I'm trying to say? I'm kind of getting loopy. And I don't know what it is, you know. I'm just, uh, just maybe it's just my age, you know. I'm 83. You get tired a lot when you're 83. You want to nap at least once a day. I didn't nap today. I didn't get a, usually around, uh, I don't know, seven o'clock I get tired and I sleep for about 45 minutes I just kind of doze off or watching television and I can't watch it I can't stick with it so you know that's what you get for being old okay all righty anyway so we have no fill tonight and we have no fill tomorrow night tomorrow night we'll run uh, our interview with Steve Kravitz so I decided tonight I would try to just spend uh at least 25 minutes talking to you, although I see Charlie is waiting. So if worse comes to worse, I can, well, I, no, that's not worse comes to worse. If best comes to best, I can always go to Charlie. Uh, but, um, you know, I, I've often thought about bringing Charlie on here one of these days uh, ahead of time uh, to just talk to us for a while, because I find him an infinitely interesting human being. And now I understand that maybe tonight we're going to see a blood clot in his eye. <laughs> yes, I saw that, Charlie. A blood clot in his eye. Yeah, I got a clot. Anyway, let me just uh, move some stuff over here. See, I have to say that because I'm... And there we go. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Where is it? Where is it? I don't know where it is. Where it is. I have no idea. I've lost it completely. Uh, let me see here. Where are we? Oh, there we are. Okay. I'm, I'm trying to find some things over here. See, I can do, usually if I'm talking to somebody, I can just do that and not say anything about it. But since I'm handling this all by myself, whatever. But since Phil isn't here tonight, and since I really, I want to say that I'm getting tired of the joke. What joke is that, Alex? Well, I'm getting tired of the joke, and that joke happens to be Donald Trump. You know, he's my, he, there's something amusing about Donald Trump, even at his very worst, because you can make so much fun out of him because he's such a douchebag, you know. Um, I, I'm, I'm thinking of changing his name to Il Duce Bag, okay, uh, because uh, he's, he's gotten to be a piece of work, but I'm getting tired of him. I'm just getting tired of him. I'm, I'm getting tired. He should have come to New York yesterday to be arraigned, and it should have just been, a, by the way, they just arraigned uh, Donald Trump. Thank you very much. On with the other news that's important, okay? But no, here they go. And, and you know, the press is making the same mistake they made 
in uh, 2016. They are covering every minute of Donald Trump. Now, let me give you a good example. Uh, on, uh, let's see here, what was it? On, uh, on Monday, he flew into New York City later on in the day, usually about uh, four o'clock, five o'clock, right? And they show the plane coming in. Mm -hmm. And then the plane lands and they show it on the tarmac at, I think it was at LaGuardia. And uh, now uh, he gets off the plane and he gets into a limo or a car. I don't think it were limos. They all look like a bunch of, uh, they, they all look like Broncos is what they look like. It looked like a giant OJ parade, okay? And um, he, gets in, he gets in one of those things and then they start follow him, following him uh, everywhere he goes, you know. If he had gone into the airport, they probably would have had him fought, you know, passing a Cinnabon, you know. But no, he got in the car and he got in the on the highway, and they went into Manhattan, and they went to the uh, to Trump Tower, uh, which I hear he owns, or who knows if he owns it, you know. Who knows if somebody else doesn't own it now. Um, but anyway, he goes to stay there. But they follow him every bit of the way. Now, you know, if you wanted to say, this bulletin, he just landed at, J at LaGuardia, fine. Uh, this bulletin, he just arrived at Trump Tower, all right. But they're following him in helicopters every inch of the way. Why? Why? They're making the same mistake they made in 2016 in giving this guy too much publicity. Now it's the next day. When's he going to leave Trump Tower to go be arraigned? We have cameras right outside Trump Tower. And they have this, this, the outside Trump Tower cam, right? And it's sitting there looking at the door, waiting to see if you can see uh, the, uh, Ib, well, uh, what do I just call him? Il, 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 uh, uh, il Duce. Il Duce, that's what I call him. Uh, get, get out of uh, Trump Tower. And they're waiting, and they're waiting. And he hasn't left yet. Oh, this just up? He hasn't left yet. Oh, okay, fine. Uh, and all of a sudden, he comes out the door, and he can barely see him, right? And he gets into another car. So now they literally, they follow him out of Trump Tower over to the FDR Drive, which goes all the way down to the bottom of Manhattan where all the courts are, okay, where this courthouse is. And they, f they literally follow him. And sometimes he goes under, there's a kind of a, an area there where you're going through, a, not a tunnel, but an over, it's just an overpass. And you're just driving under it. They can't see him, but they're just traveling along that uh, that overpass, you know, hoping he'll come out the other side and we can see the car that he's in. And we don't even know which car he's in because there are about four or five cars. Most of them are Secret Service. One of them has Trump, and I think, the I don't know, I, he's probably the one in the middle, I would imagine. But they're just following th this cortege down to, uh, down to uh, uh, the uh, civil, the, the courthouse, okay? And they go all the way down there, and then he uh, he pulls up, right? And I they then show him going in, but then they can't follow him in necessarily. And I mean, it's just it's agonizing because we don't need to see all that. You know, there must be some other news going on in the world. There must be some new carnage going on in Ukraine, or there might be some problems in Afghanistan or any number of places. But no. They're following every inch that Donald Trump is doing. And, you know, you wonder why. Excuse me, my eyes are burning. It's pollen season. Um, you wonder why. And the answer to that question is very simple. The reason why is that no network wants to not have what the other network is showing. Because if, if they... one one of them decides to follow him going down the FDR drive, the next, next one isn't going to say, well, I'm not going to cover that. Of course you're going to cover it, you asshole, because you, wanted, you don't want anybody to get, to get ahead of you. 
You know, years ago when I was working, I was working, so when I was a kid, I was, I think it was, four, how old was I? Four, five, 16 at the time? And yeah, it was a 1956 Republican convention in San Francisco. Uh, and um, Eisenhower was coming in. Now, I was in the control room where Don Hewitt, who was then the director of the coverage of the convention, was uh, spending his time uh, calling the shots and so on. And so now I'm sitting there because I'm a, my, my, I'm a page boy and my job is to sit in the uh, control room in case anybody there needs anything. And I'm sitting up in the, there's some chairs up behind it, this kind of a gallery. And uh, I'm sitting there and all of a sudden in comes Eisenhower's plane, okay? Now up on the, uh, on the tier above us are all these monitors. One says NBC, one says on the other side of it ABC, and the one in the middle is us, which is CBS, all right? So the, um, the plane starts, Eisenhower's plane starts coming in. So um, they get a shot of the plane. And then they look over and NBC's got a closer shot. So we then move, uh, Hewitt says, go telephoto, get a closer shot of that plane. And we get a slightly closer shot of the plane. After which we see ABC suddenly shifts to that kind of shot of the plane, after which NBC changes to that shot of the plane, after which you, it says, get closer to a picture of the plane, and then you look at NBC and their picture's getting closer, and ABC's picture gets closer, and it, it's gone on this way until the plane finally lands on the ground. And I'm thinking, boy, is this a waste of human talent you know all this talent at cbs nbc and abc combined are all combined to try and get the biggest shot of this plane coming in and i learned my great lesson that day that that's all the television was about especially in news one upmanship of the next guy so that whatever one guy does the other guy wants to do exactly the same thing and nobody wants to be the the company that doesn't follow the cars down the fdr drive but what importance is that how does that Give us any added knowledge to the gravity of the situation. And I'm watching them cover this thing and just going, you know, this is such a clusterfuck. It's just, I know I just got demonetized. Hi, everybody over at YouTube. Uh, you know, it was, it was just, it was such a cluster uh, a gathering. Okay, I'll say, I'll say it that way. It was a cluster gathering, and, and it just really was... It was just horrible. And I'm thinking to myself, here we go again. He gets all this free publicity. And every time you do this kind of coverage of him, his stock goes up in, his, uh, in, in the political arena. And all of a sudden, they're starting to say, well, his, his, he's, uh, the, it's gone up now, his, uh, his ratings and so on and so forth, all because of this. Well, the ratings haven't gone up necessarily because of this incident. I mean, let's be honest about it, okay? If I committed a crime, uh, they send the cops out to my house, all right? And they take me downtown in cuffs. They make me do a perp walk, you know? And then they would put me before a judge who would arraign me. I wouldn't be asked what time could I show up, and don't worry, we won't put any cuffs on you. We won't take any, any. Uh, uh, just bring up a good uh, five, uh, five by ten that you've got, or eight by ten of yourself that you use for publicity, and just bring that, and we'll take that as the picture. And we're gonna do a little fingerprint thing, but don't worry about that. We'll wipe off your fingers afterwards. No, no, I'm gonna get the full, the full Monty. He didn't get anything of the sort. He didn't have to have his picture taken. Uh, he only had to do fingerprints, uh, and he didn't know handcuffs, all right? Uh, it, it, I'm surprised I didn't ask him to bring his own handcuffs. Anyway, he, no handcuffs, and, uh, you know, I mean, come on. What, what's happening here? And, but the press is covering this in great minutiae. And if they just said, hey, he just went into the room, he's coming out, he's just, he's just pled not guilty, goodbye. We'll see you. We're going back to our regular news, all right? But no, they had to cover every inch of this, and then after that was over, they had to talk about it till we were bleeding from our ears and eyes. And then the next day, they were doing the same thing. 
and it's all Trump, 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 Trump. And here we go again. 2016, free publicity. He doesn't have to buy any advertising on these news networks for his campaign because they're giving him all the free publicity. He knows how to play them like a well-tuned violin. And they're his whore. It's amazing. It's just amazing. I wish we could say that uh, it was, a, you know, that, that we were a little smarter than that. That we go, okay, let's just announce he's just been charged with it and let's get on with everything else. We, we'll let you know when we know what the specific charges are because you should know that. And uh, after that, we'll just wait until the trial uh, begins in, uh, in December, right? Up until then, there's no, nothing to see here. And why give him all this free publicity that's only going to help him and his campaign? I mean, you got to realize the reason why this guy announced himself for president so early, uh, ahead of everybody else. I mean, about a year into the Biden administration, he said, I'm running for president. And the reason he did it was to hold, call, hold this off, hoping that if he was running for president, they wouldn't dare charge him with anything. But the fact was, they went, screw you, we're still going to charge you with something. And, uh, you, know, uh, you know, they say, well, everybody has to be proven innocent until proven guilty. And I agree with that. I've always yelled that and screamed that on this show. I've often said it over and over again. We don't try a case in the press. But, but, I can't seriously sit here and not think that he isn't guilty of something. I mean, you know, 39, uh, 39 uh, 34 counts, all right? I can't help but think that maybe maybe he's guilty of something, you know. And I'm not the press anyway, so I'm not going to try it in the press. But, uh, you know, oh, yeah, well, if, if we want to be good about it, we won't even talk about it till the thing's over with. You know, and every day when something happens, we'll talk about it when the trial happens. But otherwise, we'll keep it quiet. That's, that's my thinking on it. Now, whether you agree with that or not, but, you know, I mean, uh, I just feel that I've got to, I, I just, I'm just so tired of this guy. I'm exhausted. I'm re, it, re, and then it turned outside the, here, here's what happened to begin with. There were no incidences here in New York because of the demonstrations. They had the, the Trump people on one side, and then they had this kind of corridor, and then on the other side uh, they had... Uh, the, uh, the non-Trump people, you know, the people like you and me who think, think he's pretty much ill douchebag. So anyway, um, where are we? Okay, so uh, it, uh, there, no, none of these people really got into a clash with each other, you know. Uh, there was no fighting. There was no attacking the, the, the courthouse or anything like that. And as a matter of fact, as a turnout for Donald Trump, it was a pretty pathetic turnout. I'm sure he wasn't happy with what he saw. There were probably more people there against him than for him, okay? But in any event, that, that was what was taking place down there. But all of a sudden, up from Georgia, who comes from Georgia? And I hate the fact that she has the same, same first name as my wife because it makes me not feel as good about my wife, okay? Uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene. This little piece of work. Did you see her on 60 Minutes this week? I mean, Leslie Stahl, bravo. Bravo, Leslie. You did a great job. The reason she did a great job is she wouldn't stand for anything. I mean, she started going into all this crap, and finally, you know, Leslie's going, come on, Ms. Green, uh, Congresswoman Green, uh, what are you talking about, you know? And, and then all of us, I mean, Leslie is at a certain point is getting so frustrated with this interview, she's rolling her eyes, you know, because the hardest thing to do is to interview a politician who has an agenda and then have, ha, be expected to just sit there and listen to this agenda without challenging it. And she, she was challenging her, not because for any other reason but that the stuff she was saying was totally unsubstantiated crap all right so now marjorie taylor green who is another publicity seeker decides she's going to come to new york to support donald trump 
So she comes down, she pulls up in, I guess, a limo or whatever at the uh, courthouse, and she come, gets out with a bullhorn, right? And she starts giving a speech. Now, some people, I guess, figured that she was going to show up and that she was probably going to show up with something like a, uh, uh, a bullhorn. And so rather than uh, 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 just put up with that, the people all showed up with dog whistles, you know, police whistles. And she starts speaking, and they start blowing their whistles. And, I mean, she's starting with this crap about this is the fall da falling down of America, and, you know, it's uh, being taken over by the, the liberal left and blah, 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 blah. And they're blowing their whistles so she can't be heard. And she just got so frustrated. She got in the car and left. So much for uh, her belief in stuff and being able to stick to it. No, she just got up and left because she didn't want to have this feeling that nobody liked Marjorie Taylor Greene. Oh, boy. Go back to Georgia. You see you next Tuesday. Anyway. So that, that was pretty much the day down here. It wasn't, uh, who, oh yeah, uh, what's his name? Uh, the uh, liar, what's his name, uh, showed up. He, he showed up with her. So <laughs> it was a big day. Big show, big show, big show, yeah. Uh, now, uh, there's one other thing I wanted to talk about, and I can't remember now what it was. There was one other little uh, item in the news that, that kind of got, to, oh yeah, I was watching, what I do when there's something like the, the Trump thing, I like to go over and watch Fox. Marjorie does not want to stay in the room with me when I do, but I do. And the reason why I do uh, is because I think there's some value in taking a look at Fox. Number one, uh, there's a lot of just, what can I call it? A lot of uh, entertainment in watching Fox. Because it's like going to Bizarro World. Did you ever watch see Superman in Bizarro World, you know? Where up is down and down is up and left is right and right is left and black is white and white is black. And, you know, it's a Bizarro World. And that's exactly what you kind of heard Fox. Everything's the opposite of what you think it is. And they're justifying it. Well, today I'm watching this, this, uh, this woman who uh, runs this show, uh, the... Uh, um, where they have all the women. What's it called? Uh, the, uh, oh, it's called the, well, you, somebody, somebody will write it down here for me. They just wrote down the name George Santos here for me. Um, but anyway, but they're having this show, and they're talking about something about Chicago. Yes, Chicago has this new ultra-liberal mayor who took over from the other mayor who, uh, who was voted out of office. And uh, uh, they're talking about how horrible it is in Chicago and how crime is rampant and these thugs are blah, 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 blah. And you know what they, and she says, I wonder where this all comes from, you know, this rampant car, uh, criminality. And I've got, you know, some one answer. I've got one answer for you. I've got one answer for every piece of crime practically that takes place in this country except spousal abuse, all right? And that is most of the stuff, robbery, stealing, you know, doing things like that, the, 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 the petty crimes. Or, well, you can't call them necessarily petty crimes. But it all boils down to one thing, poverty. You want to solve the, 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 the crime problem in this country? Solve the poverty problem in this country because poverty breeds crime. Being black doesn't breed, breed crime. I can't talk. Breed crime. Uh, 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 being a Hispanic it doesn't cause crime. Uh, you know, being any one of a number, I got to tell you, for the most part, it's poverty. Except, of course, the kind of crime that a Trump commits, in which case, uh, he commits white-collar crime, which is probably more devastating to you and me than any other criminal because they're doing crimes that cost us money. 
But I just I thought about it and I said, you know, if you people over there would just say, you know, all of these things, the one thing all these, these crimes in Chicago have in common is poverty. Let's do something about poverty in Chicago. Chicago's a very poor town. It's got some very poor parts of it. Another town that has a, the most murders, I think, of any city in the United States right now is, uh, I think it's New Orleans. And New Orleans has poverty you wouldn't believe. I mean, I went down to the Ninth Ward and I looked at it after Hurricane, the, after the hurricane, and and uh, uh, you know these people are just poor as hell. So I mean, uh, crime, uh, poverty breeds crime, and so if you want to do away with a lot of crime in this country, do away with the poverty, you know. These cities that want to give everybody five thousand dollars might be onto a good idea. I mean, do anything you can to get rid of the poverty. Uh, we got enough money to take care of that and to get rid of the poverty. So, anyway, that 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 kind of got me when I was watching them, and they just have no idea because they sit there in their little, you know, uh, upper middle class jobs at Fox and don't understand how the poor live don't understand why it's in these poor neighborhoods that most of the crime takes place. So, anyway, you know something? I just blew almost a half hour here. Isn't that good? Yeah, a guy still got it, okay? Anyway, let's bring in some of these people who've been waiting. There's a, there's a handful of them, but they're all good people. Uh, and uh, not a single one of them uh, is, is Phil. So we'll admit them now all, and I will push the right button here so that they they come in. There we go. Uh, let me see here. Who's who's got their speaker up? Mitch, man. Huh? I'm always a bit behind because I'm watching you on YouTube. Oh, I see. Well, never watch me on YouTube. They probably demonetize me anyway. So you know. Yeah, no. Yeah. It was outnumbered. Was that show you were watching? Outnumbered. Yeah. 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 Well, I, I I, they used to have better women looking women on that show, didn't they? Yeah, they did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I liked it. I liked it when uh, what's his name was still the head of Fox cuz that was that was the show he liked the most because it had all their legs. <laughs> so, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Now they're wearing pants right. and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And they're not they, and they're not as good looking as they once were. They used to have right. a, they used to have a there was What did one, they have on there the other day that kind of cracked me up? It was uh Ah oh, shoot! Who was it? It was the guy, and he was he was on there, and I'm going, "What the hell is he even doing on there?" I forgot who it was. Uh, it'll come to me later, but anyway. Yeah, yeah. But, but yeah, I know what you mean because I do the same thing that you do all the time. I, I'll jump over there, and I was bouncing back and forth, and even today, I flipped over there today to see if they were still on their rampage, and 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 they were on. Who was, oh, it was Waters, Jesse Waters. Mm -hmm. He was on this rampage of how. Who's, wait a minute, who's Jesse Waters? He's he's one of the guys that's on the five, I think it is, the five. They're, they're like the outnumbered on steroids in the afternoon. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. And only it's not it's not all women. It's, it's all, you know, gut field and all those put together at the same time. Yeah. And. and and he was going off on, and I could only watch it for about 10 minutes. He was making me sick. He was going off on how Biden and his documents were being carted around in a Corvette into Chinatown. And then he moved them over to a storage place in Chinatown. And nobody said a word about it. I mean, this stuff was just out of the, out of, I don't know where it was coming from. And then he had other people on, and they're going, yeah, nobody knows about this. And I'm going, because you guys are making this shit up. But you know something? I watched them, and I kept saying to myself, aren't you guys learning from the Dominion suit? Exactly. You know, I'm going, didn't, what you guys is it? obviously just, just, just blew all that away because you're just going on and on again. You're, I mean, they're, the they're stuff about, that they're, yeah, they're coming about, up with is just like comic book crap. Yeah, it's all made up. Yeah. And uh, either that or they're getting it from some QAnon people or they're getting it from some places that just like to, you know, 
I mean, I'm so sick of this whole Hunter Biden thing. I mean, how many years has this been now with Hunter Biden and the U and and Ukraine? He was blurred out girls in bikinis in a Corvette and then Hunter Biden's head on top of the driver and stuff. And they got this big, you know, uh, banker's box full of, you know, uh, documents hanging out and flying out the back of the car and stuff. And look, there's Hunter driving down the road with exactly. Joe's exactly. documents that say classified all over him. I'm going, are you kidding me? No, I've often felt sorry for Joe Biden because he lost the son he really, that was really the pride of the family. Yeah. And, you know, and yep. then he's left with this, uh, eh, he's the village idiot. You know, I mean. They, well. yeah, but, you know, yeah, yeah. Trump has two village idiots. Oh, and they oh, all, the and they, they all go, for, they all crowd around him and say what he's a hero he is. Well, three yeah. of them, but two of them stand out pretty damn good. Well, what's, what's, Eric. What's, Eric and uh, Don. But you're talking about the daughters, aren't you, when you're saying three? Yeah, I'm talking about the two dudes. Um, yeah. Hey, listen, okay. I got to say, I, I say something. Ivanka, is it Ivanka is the other, is the daughter. She's not that dumb. She's pretty bright, you know. She What she's done, if you've noticed carefully, she's gotten out of, out of the line of fire. Out of the picture, her and yeah. her and Melania were the only ones not around, you know. Melania didn't go to New York with him. No, she didn't, did she? Oh, she, he, she did. No, neither did. Neither was. Uh, neither was uh, Ivanka. She wasn't around when he came back for his big rally speech. But well, everybody else, she was said, there. "I'm staying out of the way this time." That's what. Yeah, she's that's saying. a good idea. I, I think she she got too much into the middle of the heat of it and got subpoenaed too many times. And she just said, "That's it. You know, I don't want to do. I don't want to do this, even if it's for Daddy. Because what's Daddy doing for me except looking at me with a le- with ass. a with a le- lecherous look? You know. Yeah, I'm tired of Daddy touching my ass. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, Ivanka is the daughter he never screwed. Anyway, you know. I'll tell you, it, it's <laughs> it's, a, it's a circus all over again. It's ridiculous. I I just can't believe, like you say. That, the amount of coverage on this thing has just been absolutely ridiculous. By this time, America should be laughing at Donald Trump. They should be saying, you are a douchebag, you are a moron, you are, you know. I mean, I don't even understand how even the most uh, buck-toothed uh, hillbilly in America can put up with this guy. What are they doing? Writing checks. Yeah, yeah they're writing checks. Now that's seven eight million dollars that, now. That's yeah. the, that's the stupidest part of it. By this Folks, time, if you're like, laughing at Donald Trump, wait, wait, they should be wait, saying, wait, 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 "Who's that audio off. coming from?" Ray, turn the okay. audio off, please. I don't understand yeah. how even the yeah. most. Uh, I can't stand to listen to myself. That's your audio, Ray. Sorry. Yeah, uh, I mean, uh, uh, what would now? I forgot what I was going to say. You're talking uh, about how, yeah. How are these you know, how, how, standing yeah. by Trump? Yeah. Well, no, no, but forget about that. We'll get to that in a second. But yeah. if, if you're a, uh, a what do you call it? A, uh, a, a, a you know, a, what can we call it? A a MAGA person. MAGA. Yeah. Uh, how you can say, oh gee, he's spending a lot of money on to defend himself in court. I better send him some money. How you can send your little earned bucks, which I'm sure you you haven't got one of those jobs that pays you know a hundred thousand dollars a year, okay? Uh, how in the world you want to send money to a billionaire? Billionaire. Now this guy claims he's not only a billionaire but a multi-billionaire, but I'd be I'd be amazed if he had over five hundred thousand dollars, okay? Yep. Uh, yeah. I you know I. Uh, I, I just, I, how, why would you send a millionaire, a billionaire, money? He's got the money, doesn't he? You don't have to send him anything. What, you want to get one of those T-shirts with, the, he, he's doing T-shirts now with the, uh, with the mug shot that was never taken. Never taken. Yeah. Yeah. For four, he's, and it's $47 because it's the 47th oh, oh, oh. presidency he's going for. Yeah. So I, I'm going to get one of those. You know. Get one of his NFTs yet? No, no, <laughs> the ninety-nine dollar ones. Yeah. What we should all do? I mean, I could probably. I mean, I used to make up T-shirts for shows that we would do, so I know how to get T-shirts made. We should make up a Donald Trump uh, mugshot 
and sell our own T-shirts. He, he can't stop us, can he? No. No. I think so. No. But, I mean, come on. We might, as well, we might as well get cut in on the people down there. Yeah, exactly. I mean, come on, folks. You know. Yes, uh, uh, Jeff. How you doing? So <laughs> I'm driving home. You're driving home. In Connecticut. Yeah. And what do I see? A big Trump advertisement on the street that says, you should have voted for Trump. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason it's being? On, on the highway, you know, it's a, in a local street. <laughs> yeah, you notice they didn't give a reason. <laughs> no. no. No, yeah. Why, because he's so pretty? I don't know. I, I, I can't believe that people spend money on this. Well, I just, I don't understand any of it. I don't understand why, you know... Only in American politics today can a guy get indicted by a grand jury in New York City and be, uh, you know, indicted and... and uh, uh, on his know, airplane with his name on it. Yeah, coming in with... It, yeah, there's a decal. It's only a decal. It comes off and you, can put, you can put up whatever <laughs> you want to on it. Whoever the person who really owns the airplane, yeah, you know, his whatever. name. Yes, Alan. Yeah, be, before he became president, he owned the 757 that he was in. This one has been leased, this this uh, uh, jet that he's using. And where did he get the money to lease it? I, I don't know. Uh, probably out of the campaign funds that have been contributed to him. Yeah, well, I don't, I, I don't think it's a brand new aircraft. It's probably something used. Yeah. yeah. There are leasing companies. General Electric is the largest leasing company in the world. For aircraft, a lot of airlines lease aircraft. From well, them. also a lot of people. Who, engines. A, a lot of people who own aircraft lease them out to people who yeah. want to use them. You know, so um, maybe he leases it by the day, and it's a big decal they just put on the side of it when they go anywhere, oh. and they strip off the decal. You know, I, I mean, remember he's got all kinds of government. Uh, people that have to go with him because he is the president. Well, listen, I am, president. I am, uh, I'm, a, I'm, I'm fairly egotistical, okay, but I don't know. Not even I would put my name on the side of a plane, <laughs> right? It's not like he's just a, bu just a bus. <laughs> it's not like it's a campaign sticker or anything. There, it just says Trump. Yeah. Well, here comes. Tr I wonder whose plane that is. Well, it must be. Trump, because if he didn't have his name on it, we wouldn't give a good goddamn. And you know something? Even if it has his name on it, that makes me even have give less of a goddamn. Yeah. Right. I'm I'm just amazed. I'm just amazed by by the American public and their reaction to this guy. This is a guy who is has conservatives backing him. I mean, you got guys like uh, you know in the House and the Senate who are all backing him like crazy. Who admits? Who admits that he had sex with a porn star? Who admits that he had sex out of out of wedlock? I mean, out of wedlock, out of <laughs> out of marriage. I mean, this is the kind of person. And then they call themselves Christians, by the way. Well, what kind of Christian behavior has he ever engaged in? Thank you. Yeah. That he goes to church every now and then when it suits him politically. And, or holds up a Bible in front of a church? You know, other than that, nothing. Yes, Mr. Nunn? He holds the Bible upside down. Oh, upside, upside down, down. yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> you know. Uh, <laughs> uh, that was for people who were, you know, looking at it inside a camera and inside a, the, where the image is upside down. Yeah. Anyway, you know, I mean, it's just uh, I, I just don't understand why these pe what these people see in him. I mean, how they can back this kind of behavior that we know he has done. You know, I mean, is it that a bunch of guys in the Senate are going when he says, well, I, I didn't have sex with a porn star. They're all going. You know. I mean, come on. This is a guy who morally is uh, uh, just absolutely disgusting. 
and I'm finding him morally disgusting, and I'd have sex with a porn star. In fact, now that I think of it, I have had sex with a porn star, but, you know. But did you pay her 130000 afterwards? Hell, she yeah. paid me 130000 to leave. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know. I mean, did you select her or did she select you? Uh, we were I, actually, I, I, we, we just got together. Yeah. yeah. He's not saying. I already, I know who it is. Yeah, uh, me too. Who? <laughs> no, you well, would, said it before. No, you wouldn't know. You really oh. wouldn't know her. She was somebody I went with before she was a porn actress. Yeah. Oh, I thought it was okay. You thought it was Marilyn? Yeah, I thought she was Marilyn. Eddie Eddie Eddie. What? Annie Sprinkle. Oh, Annie Sprinkle, you're right. I met two two porn stars. <laughs> <laughs> but who's counting? Adrian, cover your ears. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's not up here. Just kidding. Yeah. What yeah. are they called stars? <laughs> uh, that, that I could never uh, that, that I could never get. You know? I you mean, a porn movie, you're suddenly a star. Well, it's always yep. if you're in porn, you're automatically a porn star. I don't care if you've yep. just done one movie or a thousand of them. Uh, 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 but uh, you know, uh, you're called a porn star. I've and, done a few here at the house. I'm a porn star. Well, I mean, I'm, you've tried an actor. all your all your mm-hmm. life as an actor to become a star, right? Well, I wasn't really trying to become a star, but it would be fine. But no. Yeah. But, but your easiest your easiest way of doing that was if you went into porn, and all of a sudden you'd be a porn star. Yeah, like uh, Ron Jeremy was a regular actor, and he yeah. started. And... Well, I mean, it always bothered me, for instance, that at the Apple Bar, uh, they've got the uh, the Genius Bar, and all the yeah. people behind the bar are called geniuses. And I'm going, this is going to be a real blow to Albert Einstein. <laughs> You know, I mean, they're so, all getting paid minimum wage, <laughs> minimum yeah. wage to be a genius. But we take we do terms like that very often. They just throw them out of the way. And porn star. All yeah. of a sudden, anybody who makes a porn movie is a porn star. They're not a porn movie wannabe or anything like that. They're always a porn star. One picture, you know. And they're not actresses. They're reactresses. <laughs> Am I right? They react. Yeah. They're reacting to the situation. They're not acting. Hell, if I want acting, some of my ex-wives were great at faking orgasms. So I mean, I should. They 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 should have been actresses. You know. So. Hey, so I found that that airplane is a 1991 Boeing 757 200 series. It's owned by DJT Operations, so obviously that's Donald J. Trump Operations. Mm-hmm. It's a Rolls-Royce engine, mm-hmm. RB211 series, turbofan. Mm-hmm. Weighs 20,000 pounds. Yeah, that's so he owns one. that one. But it's or 21,000 pounds if he's flying in it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> before, he, before he takes a crap. So... <clears throat> But it's a 1991, so it's been refurbished a few times. Oh, yeah. And undoubtedly, he owns it and rents it out. That's how he pays for it. Yeah, it's based in Wilmington, Delaware. Oh, Oh, wow. Joe Joe Biden could take it. Right? Yeah. Yeah. All they got to do is paint it over, and he could borrow it. Yeah, yeah. So the one the one that you might be talking about, Kevin, might be his original. When he got into... That's the one he flew today or yesterday. Oh, really? So he, he... Fix that up because it was there were parts missing off of it at some <laughs> airport in New York while he was president. Yeah, it, it's yeah. This is the one that I ran the tail number on it. Oh, okay, so it's yeah. really it's really an old fixer upper. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. yeah although the planes, there are planes flying right now that you may fly on that are like thirty years old. Yeah. There are a lot of them. Yeah, they just change out the engines. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of times, my wife works in that business. So they lease the engines. You just borrow the engines, mm-hmm. slap them onto the the aircraft, and then use them for a while. And then you go get another one and lease it for a while and get mm-hmm. another one. Yeah. So I'm sure that Trump oh, Trump makes money out of that plane, and I'm sure that Trump sign can come off of it. Yeah. Just remember, there's all kinds of CIA guys and whatever. Yeah. <clears throat> I doubt he. On that plane. Not, not CIA. 
uh, uh, you're talking about the Secret uh, Service. Secret Service. Uh, Secret Service. Yeah, I doubt and it. I... They get on a plane, and guess what? Trump charges them. I'm sure. I'm sure. At three times normal price. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the thing that was funny that cracked me up is when when he got off the plane and then they rolled up the the uh, the, the the ramp for the for the luggage, and they got the ramp underneath and the cargo bay opens up and about eight or ten pieces of luggage come out and I go really, really? ten pieces of luggage come oh, out one day trip to New York yeah. yeah and they can't carry it off the plane yeah <laughs> there must have been a, only ten bags that came off that plane. Yeah. And there was probably ten people that came off of it, but, you know, that were yeah. of any importance. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I mean, I, I'm just, I'm tired of him. I'm just tired of it. Him. Is it's, it's just, it's a waste of time. It's a waste of air time. It's a waste of money. It's just. But don't they had, don't they, had, they... they had a they had a camera at the place that he was speaking, waiting for him to come out and speak. Thank God they didn't play the whole thing. They stopped like halfway through. But we're waiting there, waiting there. I, I was doing something else, and it just happened to me on TV. And then you see the My Pillow guy come on and say hi to everybody. It's like, oh my God, really? I thought the best thing was when he was walking through the door, and nobody held it for him, and it slammed. Yeah. yeah. Where was this? Oh, you mean at the, at the, at court the courthouse? House? Yeah. Oh, I didn't see that. Oh, that's yeah, he was oh, walking that's out. And he expected someone to hold the door open for him, and it just went bam, and he had to push it open. Has he lost? Is he lost weight? Yeah. First time he's done that. And he looks. His face looks a little bit older, either smaller or older. But yeah, older, but, but his body looks. Weight. His body looks thinner too. I told my wife they. And he still weighs two hundred and seventy pounds. Yeah, year. I wouldn't say yeah. thinner, but he's. How tall? After losing the weight. <laughs> after losing the weight. Wow, wow. Well, anyway. Hello. I mean, it's interesting though that, the, from what I can tell, the case that they're bringing to him against them in New York is really not a real strong case, but I think once they get down to the documents, it's going to get ugly. Yeah. Um, I think it's going to, I think he's going to get convicted of a misdemeanor, which is what the, yeah, it's going to start off slow. And then I think it's going to get worse. Well, well I think, I hope, I think of anything, this emboldens all the other cases in the country against yeah. him now to go ahead yeah, I think with that theirs. It's just a start. And, yeah. I, and I hope that's what it turns out. Well, to today be. he got some bad news, and the bad news was that the appeal that they were making to the courts to not have uh, uh, Pence and Mark Meadows yeah. and a couple other people yeah. testify before the uh, January third commission or commit not committee but the the oh, uh, the, the, th the investigation of January third yes. by yeah. the I believe the FBI. Uh, that uh, they have to testify. They appealed to the judge that they wouldn't have to testify because it's privileged information, and the judge said, "Screw you! They gotta, you know, they gotta show up in court." But then subpoenaed to testify to the grand jury. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. So I think they're gonna. I think they're gonna come after them federally. I think federally they're going to go after him, and I think that's, they're going to go. Where the, I, I think that's where the big deal is going. I think be. they're going to go after him for the documents, and I think Georgia is finally, ultimately, going to yeah. charge him. That's I mean, what I this, want this to is just the beginning of it. By the that's time, by the time Georgia he's by the, the most... by the time he's running for president, it will be so up to his ass in litigation that I'd be surprised if he could even, you know, stay in the race. I mean, Georgia is the most open and blatant outright yep. blatant you know accusation and and which one the most open thing that he did which one B georgia when georgia he made absolutely vote. absolutely can't we just get more I mean, votes yeah. can't you just Give find 11, more votes? votes yeah i think the january 6th incite how stupid said, can you be he said fine he thought they're under the table that's all so it was a perfectly perfect call it was a, as perfect a call as he's ever taken in his life. It was just as perfect as the Ukraine call. <laughs> Another perfect call. It was it was a giant, amazing, fantastic, perfect call. We've never seen a call like this before. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Not since Lincoln yeah. has there been this kind of phone call. All right. So, uh, hello, Tony. How are you? <laughs> Get in there. Your uh, your pal was in town yesterday. My brother told me, yeah, he was 
in working 301. It was kind of quiet, he said to me. Nothing really crazy. He heard they booed at that Marjorie Taylor Greene. They yeah, were yeah we, we already were talking about that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah he's... You know, I heard you saying he came in for a day with like 10 suitcases. You would think he'd have clothes in the hotel. Well, yeah. Like where he lives. Well, I think he does. Well, he probably does. You know, yeah, he, he lives in Florida. What'd yeah, you say? He, but he still has an apartment in Trump yeah. Tower. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he was here. Hmm. He came in Monday, though. He was listening on 1010 Winds. And he said, oh, Trump plane has landed. It's like 2 o'clock. I was like, oh, shit. Yeah, yeah. I wish every time my plane landed, they made an announcement on Wins News Radio. You know, you know, I was going to tell you, Alex, me and my brother went food shopping once all the way out Long Island by the Costco. And we went near the air. There was like a, an airport. There. I forgot what they called it. And I saw one of the Trump planes when we made the turn around. We were near the airport. You saw the Trump. It must have landed at the or it was on. It was on the like on the base down there. We saw one time I saw it. What do you mean not LaGuardia? Not LaGuardia. I forgot where it was, the one in Long Island. Not Roosevelt I forgot Field? What they called it. Not Roosevelt Field. Because that's a mall. No, now. Was, uh, my brother as, knows that. As, as a mall. tribute to Lindbergh, uh, the uh, t place where he took off years ago is a mall. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Field, yeah. 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 I like that mall. Yeah. We'll yeah. never find the baby now. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. That was Jersey, I think. That was in New Jersey, yeah. 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 Bruno Richard Hauptman was accused of it. And executed, but probably Did didn't do, do it. it he probably or didn't no, do it. I mean, yeah. oh, he probably they didn't. Executed do it. Him and they never found a body. Did they find the body? They did it? find the body, Alex. They did. I remember reading a bio. Yeah. 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 Heard about it on Fox News, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we're not sure it's true in, uh, it's at this point. But uh, yeah. anyway, so Fox uh, News could fuck up the weather report. Yeah. I was at my parents' house. We had clocks on yesterday. Really? And the, big, the whole thing that they painted Trump as a victim, a total victim. Oh, Marjorie Taylor Greene said he was just as crucified oh. as Christ or something like that. Yeah, and then Nelson yeah, Mandela. Yeah. That's what she said. Uh, uh, so many people have been sent to jail. Nelson Mandela, uh, Jesus Christ was sent to jail. Donald Trump was sent to jail. I mean, arrested. Hmm. Arrested, sorry. Yeah. I guess the police of the Romans, New York Metropolitan Police of the so Romans. So was and... Charlie Manson, okay? Yeah. <laughs> he he was crazy. I remember he said I never killed anybody. Yeah. And, Jeffrey and Jeffrey Dahmer. And Jeffrey Dahmer. Who was just hungry? And who was that guy they killed in Florida? <laughs> uh, uh, you know, went around killing the. Huh? Who or was Ted that guy? Ted, Ted yeah. Bundy? Yeah. These Ted were all Bundy people. Ted Bundy crazy, yeah. Misunderstood individuals. Just yeah. misunderstood. Did, yeah. did just like Jeffrey Dahmer, school? misunderstood. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, Wayne, how you doing? Okay, how about you? Yeah, yeah. Have you been following all this? Uh... Not real close. Not real close, really? no. Oh, okay. Those Those 10 uh, suitcases that uh, Tony mentioned, they were probably to take towels from the hotel back <laughs> 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 oh that's good Wayne. that's what i was i was thinking there they were full of Kentucky, Kentucky fried chicken on the way and then towels back home <laughs> take the soap my mother used to take the soap from the hotels race on the little soaps yeah Yep, yep, Take yep. them home from Disney. All right. Well, by the way, let me uh, let me just mention something. Did you hear anything different on our program tonight? Yeah, Mr. No, no Phil. Huh? No Frank. What? There's no guest. No Phil. No Phil. No that. Besides that, that's, that's... <laughs> he told me couldn't make it. Yeah. <laughs> no, no bad interference. No noise. Yeah. No, no did, Phil. Did you? Oh, I know where... Hmm? I know everybody's going to be heartbroken, but Phil told me he won't be on any day this week. I know. I know. Oh. What's he doing? And, and actually, I did a half hour, and I did okay, didn't I? Yeah. 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 That's great. Yeah. I haven't done that in a while. But anyway, listen, I'll play you something, and just tell me what has changed, okay? Listen closely. Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Steve Fox, huh? the guy from KQED. Yeah, Steve Fox. Yep. That's Steve Fox. Wow. Yeah, I, I tried different. to. I, well, I tried to get uh, Rob to do it because that's kind of the tradition. 
Mm-hmm. And uh, Steve had said he was willing to help me with some promos and things like that. Um, but uh, 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 our, our good friend, uh, you know, can't do it because he's living in the Philippines now. And he doesn't have any equipment set up, and there's no way he can record it. So no. I got a hold of Steve, and I said, hey, can you do it? And he did one, and I, it wasn't exactly the way I wanted it. And then he said, here, do it a little faster, a little this, a little that. And he did like six takes, and I just chose my favorite, and that was it. And it, it's good. Oh, Listen to it again, folks. Here's another one. Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Sounds good, huh? Yeah, yeah he's good. very good. He's very good. And and if you watch the opening of the show tonight, uh, the animation had Steve Fox's voice on it. So so now we're up to date. Now now in our ninth year of absolutely, this is ridiculous, isn't it? That I've been doing mm-hmm. this for nine years. It's crazy to think. Hmm. But through a whole thing, it's been nine years. Yeah. 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 It seems like yesterday we started. What, what were you going to say? Somebody saying something? I've gone through a whole decade of my life on here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> almost. Almost. Uh, because we go back about a year before this uh, to, uh, what was it, um, July 5th, when we started doing the TV version of it out of the TV studio. Yeah, yeah, right. And I don't know why we've arbitrarily said that April 1st was like the new year, next year, but we have, so that's what we're doing. There was no video for a long time. No, there was video. We, Friday it, night. Oh, when you I remember were, video no, on Friday no, nights no, only. No, no, but you don't remember the very original show that we did out of a TV studio. I, I do. Yeah. I watch it every day. And I know Charlie yeah, was that there. That was in the afternoon, yeah. Yeah, I could watch it all the time. Yeah, yeah with uh, Albert. Yeah, it looked great. It was a yeah, great was looking a show, a very pro looking show. Yeah. Uh, if you want, ever want to see them, they're uh, they're up on uh, uh, what is it? Uh, Gabnet? Uh, is it Gab? Uh, is it uh, Gabnet or Gabnet TV? One of the. Well, I think they appear on both of the. Uh, yeah, they appear on both of the uh, uh, Gabnet uh, channels on Roku. So. When I first listened, Charlie just moved to Arizona. Oh, well, that was in 2018. Yeah. Or you're just moving back or something, I remember. Yeah. 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 Back next year. That was when we started the TV shows. And then uh, let's see here, when we started just doing the this only, and then Friday nights we did a video of it, okay? Um, uh, Charlie had lost his first toe, I think. So it was. Uh, yeah. <laughs> How your feet doing, by the way? So far, so good. Yeah, so I lost far, so those six toes in one year, and none since then. Yeah. So hey, Jeff, why do you have a hand up there? No, you see the hand on the screen. Yeah, he's got a yellow hand in his picture. Yeah. That's the raising his hand. Oh, I can lower your hand. Oh, Here we go. That I just got rid of it for you. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I can oh, lower. Now, I just now Brian's clapping. <laughs> I, I just noticed that I can actually lower the hand. Uh, oh, oh, Brian did it too. Son of a bitch. Oh, here, I'll get rid of it. No, I can't get rid of that. Oh, boy. You know, I can set something up so you can't do that. It's just like. Oh, you mentioned my eye too. My eye is almost healed now. Oh, yeah, what happened? Now, tell people. Yeah, I, there's, there's a picture of you on the web. Yeah, well, I, I just w- went to the bathroom and I was washing my hand, looked in the mirror, and my eye was all red. He, I go, what the? He probably had squeezed okay. too hard or something. I, <laughs> I, I burst a blood vessel, and then my doctor, you know, I panicked. I went to the, the uh, uh, ur- not to the emergency, I went to the urgent care. I didn't want to take all the way to the emergency room and saw the doctor there, and he said, that's that's not unusual in a 70 year old man. So it's nothing to worry about or anything. It'll be healed in about a week. And it's been about 10 days and it's almost healed. It's almost gone. So, and how many days ago did that happen? It happened about uh, 10 days ago. Yeah. Oh, really? We never noticed yeah. it. That's how good. Yeah, I posted uh, about two or three days after it happened. So I, I thought it might go away faster, but no, the doctor was right. It was, yes. but it's like, 
it just happens. I'm I'm not doing anything. I wasn't doing anything strenuous. I wasn't exercising or you know anything like that and burst a blood vessel. It just burst on its own. Wow. That's amazing. And apparently, older yeah. people, that happens. Uh, well, I've never had it happen to mine. Frequently. I've never had it happen to mine, but, you know. That's the first time for me. Yeah. 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 Do you have any wine or, uh, or beer uh, or something like that? No. Yeah. No, he wasn't asking if that was caused. He no, wants to know if you have any wine or beer. <laughs> oh, I got wine. <laughs> oh, he's got wine. <laughs> yeah. Um, Sometimes it makes uh, you feel a little extra bleeding. Well, you know, when that strain is when I'm running to follow some of these young base runners. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's when I would expect to do it, but I hadn't even umpired that day. It just. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, anyway. Mm -hmm. Let me see here. What else is I there? thought I was having a stroke, actually. <laughs> oh, God. Don't do that. I mentioned this during the beginning, and it was uh, I was watching the, uh, what's the name of that show again? Somebody wrote it down here. The, uh, uh, the Outnumbered? Uh, outnumbered, yeah. Yeah. That's the name of the show. And, you know, this was a woman there, and she's going, you know, isn't it terrible what's happening in Chicago? You know, it's because of that liberals, liberal politics up there. It's causing it's causing all the crime, and I I'm looking at her and going, don't you understand? It's poverty that causes it. Yeah. You know, if you took care of the problem of poverty, you probably take care of the crime problem uh, yeah. too. That'd be the ancillary benefit. <laughs> but all you got to do is it, it, somebody once said to me, you know, how can we? Uh, prevent the uh, the effect when you do nothing about the cause, yep. you know. And what's going on in Chicago and the crime in Chicago and the crime in in uh, New Orleans is is uh, all a, a, as an outgrowth of uh, poverty, you know. And if you can't do anything about the uh, the uh, the sim the, the uh, cause, well, how are you going to? Uh, you're trying to solve the symptom before you solve the cause. You know, so I, I, I don't know how any of you might feel about that, but, you know. Well, of course. What is the name of the TV show? Uh, the Outnumbered. The this, out this is where they have these uh, four women, five women, and one guy. One guy, yeah. One I thought guy. it was 9 o'clock out here. Yeah. That, it was all started by what's-his-name, the guy who used to run Fox and finally was thrown out of there for, you know, taking upskirt pictures or whatever. I don't know what he yeah. was doing. And uh, um, uh, he started that show, and and uh, it it's uh, the whole idea is they got these women with short dresses sitting in chairs where their legs are showing, and you can almost look up their crotch, oh, yeah. almost just so about. Close. I mean, and they always have one guy in the middle of the couch. One I guy in the middle that. of the couch who's like a real douchebag, you know. He's yeah. like some guy from the, you know, uh, Michigan State University. What was that? That was me accidentally hitting an outnumbered video. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. I was say, that sounded like female. <laughs> I thought maybe all of a sudden one of you really wasn't who you said you are. <laughs> and I've been AI'd here. And uh, you, you're waiting for the, waiting, the video to pop up. The video to yeah. pop up, you know. You know, the I'm other day. I, I That's not I, really right. That's a deep fake. I didn't, I'm I didn't tell you when this happened last week, but about uh, three quarters of the way through the show, all of a sudden, I got Zoom bombed like crazy. I mean, about 15 people showed the, up. The Wait, video. Don't do that, Ray. I, I Pop, didn't. Well, somebody I, did something. I was trying to close a window. Yeah, uh, popped up. <laughs> and uh, 15 names. And I know they're all phonies, but I mean, they were really inundating there for a while, but they gave up pretty fast. But I'm just thinking, you know, I, these people, haven't they gotten used to the fact that I don't answer anymore? You know, that I'm very careful about it? Mm -hmm. So, anyway. Hey, Kid Rock is the other news. What? Oh, what's, Kid Rock, yeah. Well, Kid Rock, what's he doing? He... He had a quick clip of him with a machine gun. And if you see the machine gun shot, I mean, you, Alan will probably see this if you see that video. He's shooting Bud Light. Bud Light. Like, 
three or four cases of Bud Light with a machine gun. But when you see that picture, you see all of these other like sparks coming from the other side because they already had something rigged to blow that up. So when he's shooting, he's missing everything already. <laughs> and, and, yeah, look at it again. You'll see these fires from the side and, you know, Alan's the expert at guns and the guy shot and all this stuff. And he still missed two of them. He only hit the bottom. But anyways, but yeah, he's, he's mad because, because they're supporting, I guess, this trans, uh, but like supporting this trans woman, trans woman, trans person. And a uh, million followers. Yeah, it's, it's a big, she's a big influencer. And, um, and so, yeah, he's just, he's just careers washed up and all that type of stuff. Think so I can maybe, get attention. Do you think I can get more viewers here if I went trans? He'll, he'll, <laughs> he'll change his name to Kid Rock from Kid Rock to Kid Stone. Alex, just wear a blonde wig and put on some lipstick. That'd be great. <laughs> and you can do your makeup tips like you've wanted to forever. Yes. 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 Forever. They can be my mom's moo if you want. I mean, that, that way. Hey, Alex, Alex, okay, okay, wait, hold on. No, this, seriously, okay? Alex, how, how many more years do you have, right? 10, 20 years, right? At the most. You know, just think if if the headlines read out, you know, former Alex, you know, Bennett DJ, it turns trance. I mean, you know how many followers you will get. And, do, and doing makeup tips on top of it. Yeah, you, you, you'd break the internet. I think that I would actually be the ugliest trans in history. <laughs> that could be your whole shtick. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, yeah, I've got right. this thing already where anytime I put up Marjorie and I call it uh, two old people kiss and it gets tons of views. I mean, yeah. just, you know, yeah. amazing the amount of views. Maybe it's fetish thing. Huh? The Maybe fetish it's Marjorie, thing. not you. What? Did you say Marjorie? Marjorie's a lot prettier than you are. Well, I know that. <laughs> and thank God she is. But you didn't get your makeover yet, though, then see what happens. Oh, yeah, <laughs> give it a try. Right. <laughs> you know, I might, might get Marjorie a run for her money. Yeah. You know, you, you know, you get the wig going. Some of those girlfriends used to always wear wigs. She always had different hair. I was like, what happened? I, I Doesn't know. Donald have a, a different wigs and different Alex, colors? Alex, his hair is terrible. Oh, oh, his see. hair, the other day, it, yeah. he was at the mm -hmm. airport, and the wind was blowing. And the hair was like, Look like a mohawk. You know, was, is that a comb over? Or just just it all it oh, oh, is it a comb yeah. over? Oh, boy. Oh, it is. <laughs> Big time comb. Has really he ever. Picture, uh, right when he became president of the wind blowing his hair straight up and all one side was totally bald. Yeah. yeah. But why has it. Why the guy has all that money? Why didn't he get transplants? Yeah. He can afford a transplant. You know, why do that whole comb over deal? Do transplants. I don't know. You know? Bill got transplants. So look at how much hair he's got on his head. He <laughs> says the only thing left are his transplants right now. Oh, okay. Yeah. But I mean, I mean, yeah, certainly yeah. Trump with his billion dollars. He should be able to get something really legit, you would think. You would think. You would think. Did you ever do Bob Rubin? I mean, not do him, but uh, interview him or anything <laughs> on your show? Sorry, you came uh, out wrong. What are you asking? Uh, the, the comedian, Bob Rubin. Uh, Ray and I saw him live uh, yeah, over the weekend. Yeah, in San yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, has he ever been on my show? Yes. Uh, would right. anybody like to answer that question? He you used to be on the show like that? Stephen Kravitz. He used to be on once a week like Stephen Kravitz. Really? Uh, yeah. the and then he was on his show all the time. He was across the street at the... John Bull Bar and yeah, it's always. He, he was, I, I, I couldn't understand anything he said. I just heard everybody laughing like hell all the time. Lighten and, up, everybody! It's your room. It was. Uh, I thought some. it was a good show. Ash and, Brown. Uh, except for uh, one of Phil's friends, friend came along and he was heckling the guy and he was he heckling him. Up. Oh yeah. yeah, he was giving him tell him, right? And, he was and, and Steve didn't shit. and 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 uh, um Phil? Phil didn't tell him to shut up? Yes he did. Oh, Phil, Phil did, up, Ray did, did, I did. Why was yeah. he heckling him? He was drunk. Yeah, he was drunk and stupid. I've you been know, drunk at comedy shows without heckling anybody. Well, well he wasn't friend. like heckling, he was trying to top the jokes. 
Oh my god. Right. And it, it would play really loud when things got kind did, of did you did you did you try to try to mention to him that the act was on the stage, not off it? We kept telling him to shut up, and then finally we really told him to shut up, and then he yeah. did. Yeah, yeah. Well, but he was ignoring us most. Thank of the time. you, Phil, for taking people to a show and ruining it for Bob. It wasn't Phil's fault. Well, he brought that guy. Like one of the listeners. He didn't bring in a friend of his, brought him unannounced. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, who listens to the show brought the guy. Yeah, the guy that the guy that listened to the show listens to the show and doesn't get on it. Uh, his name is Paul, and he's a nice guy, but he brought this guy with him, and I don't think he'll be bringing him to any more shows. <laughs> yeah. Paul's a nice guy. Paul is a nice guy. Yeah. Even, even though he's a Trump supporter. Yeah. Yeah. So why isn't Phil going to be here tomorrow night? I don't care, but why isn't he going to be here tomorrow night? Told me tonight. Um, oh, uh, he's got to do a security detail synagogue for Passover. Oh, that's oh, right. Oh, oh Passover, yeah, yeah. He goes in there with his, his guns, a toting. I'll tell you, I got, I got, I got uh, my friend uh, Buddy Loves coming into town and yeah. his wife. And they're very nice when they come. They stay here. And... Uh, they're, uh, we're doing, um, <clears throat> uh, what is it, Saturday night, we're going to a play, uh, which is, uh, I'm trying to remember what the name of it is now, it's a it's Tom Stoppard play currently on Broadway, and, um, but Marjorie just doesn't want to go, yeah. she says, it's at night, see how old we've gotten, it's at <laughs> night. Why aren't we going to a matinee? And right. I kind of feel the same way because what happens is whenever I go to a Broadway show and it's a play, there's a certain kind of stage lighting. And this has been throughout my history of going to the theater. There's a certain kind of stage lighting that makes me drowsy. Mm -hmm. And really? I fall asleep. I remember seeing a play on, in the West End in London once and the lighting was that kind of lighting. I, I couldn't tell you what it was about. I slept through the whole goddamn thing. Lights went on in the play. And boom, $100 I'm asleep. a ticket. <laughs> oh, here? Got to be two fifty a ticket. This is a big ticket. Oh, no, but that was at the, at the West End. Oh, the West End? That was yeah. Back in those days, it wasn't that expensive. No. No, this was years and years ago. And, uh, you know, I mean, it was just uh, amazing. Just amazing. Uh, that. So we're going to have to go do this. And, and usually I have a call I make with uh, Kevin and uh, and, uh, um, and Patrick and uh, uh, Bubbles. <laughs> no, and uh -huh. we we all get together on Saturday night, and I won't be able to do it this oh. week because I'm going to be in the theater. So. The theater. Oh no. So I I can't do it. You'll I mean, probably you and Marge will be. I mean, I have to write Josh and tell him. Yeah. yeah. What? And you and Margie will probably be the only two wearing a mask. What, we're going to wear a mask? Why? In the theater? I don't know, because COVID could spread easily. Nobody's, right? nobody's wearing masks anymore. I know. Well, Nobody. That... I don't know. I may. I don't know. But, uh, you know, with it, yeah. It's kind of been shown now that, you know, people who are immunized are pretty well immunized now. Ah, you can ask Charlie about three hundred a day in this country. Yeah, but they haven't. Did, have they been? Have they they been? haven't been posting since March tenth. So I don't know what. Oh, oh and, that's right. It stopped. Uh, and have they been? Uh, are, there, are those have those were those people uh, vaccinated? Answer is probably no. I don't. Yeah. So the CDC put out something last week and said that there are people that are still dying, and they are mainly people that are over sixty or have comorbidities that are fully vaccinated. Yep. So, you know, you should, I think you should still wear a mask in the crowd. Older people like Us. me and Alex, we have a, a certain. Yeah, I'm trying to think if I should wear a mask or not. You're, you're, you're asking me a good question there. Yeah. It, I, I, I think you should, you know. That would that would be. I, I mean, I wear a mask everywhere I go indoors. I went to Costco today, wore a mask. A lot of people aren't. I don't care. I, I'm more, I'm concerned about me. Mm -hmm. 
And yeah, people that are older, the older you are, the higher risk you are, of, uh, even if you're fully vaccinated, of having a bad outcome. So wear the mask. I don't want to get that damn thing. I got it after I was fully vaccinated. I yep. couldn't sleep for four months. <laughs> wow. wow. You had long COVID, yeah. Uh, I, a lot of people wearing them, and it doesn't bother me. I mean, if you do, you do. Who you don't, you don't. No big yeah. deal. Brian, um, um, I don't see you lately with our little um, uh, keto pops. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. What? Oh, yeah. I, I forgot to get them a couple, last couple times. You know what? They don't have them at mine right now. They don't have them at mine. They've never had them at mine. Really? Really? Wow. Yeah, they, I don't know if they had them last. We went there last week. I don't know if they had them because oh. I didn't check. But I, Here, yeah, you should have been getting them. I forgot to get them. Here, I can check right now. At least they, they went back to the, the normal ones instead of those weird crunchy ones that are mm, terrible yeah the, the peanut brittle or something like yeah, that yeah the whole shell doesn't come off in one shot let me like see here one. keto keto let me just check it here yeah, the popsicle man comes around what an interesting book. show you've got here alex you're looking up what's at costco this week <laughs> um, hey keto important information nope 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 nothing hmm Really? Have some... what? I, oh, that's a, your Instacart, whatever. Yeah, I still have some in my in my freezer, but you know, I'm looking at Costco.com and I don't see them. Well, the, Costco.com does not carry food, really. Oh, but the Costco. If you go to your Costco <laughs> warehouse and look uh -oh. it up there, yeah, they, don't, they don't have them because I well, I got all kinds of keto things on Costco.com. Um, you're not going to want to go come to California, but they have frozen stuff. Including well, ice cream bars of some sort. Is it the ice cream bars, the keto? Yes, the bars. This is with or without nuts. Mm -hmm. God, these are expensive. How Twelve much? of them are almost twenty dollars. Really? They weren't. They how, how much were they before, Ray? Or not Ray? Who? I, don't, I don't know. Hey, I, don't don't, know. I think I, they're uh, sixteen dollars. Brian, sixteen. Sixteen. Like like San Jose, yeah. you get a better deal. Yeah, I don't know what happened to my what, what happened to my keto bars. I don't know. I'd send you some, but they might be melted by the time. <laughs> They'd be, yeah, right, right. Even dry ice wouldn't help, you yeah. know. So. Yeah, maybe I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, anybody seen anything good on TV lately? I've been watching the Orville, Alex, on your recommendation. Yeah. I love it. It's a very funny yeah. show. Oh my God, I love it so much. In fact, in some ways, it's better than some of the original Star Trek episodes. It is. I did my whole podcast about it today. Yeah, I love that. Oh. Yeah, it it had it, the Orville. In case people don't know, is Seth uh, um, McFarland. Far, McFarland's. I was going to say Seth Rogen. Yeah, Seth, I always do that. Seth McFarland. Ray, what's your podcast name? Uh, Green Room on Air. Oh yeah, that's right. You did you, you interviewed Alex one time, right? Yeah, that was yeah, his, yeah. that was his biggest show ever. Yeah, yeah of course. Huge. Uh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so what was I going to say? So anyway, John Wick, John Wick Four. Yeah, John Wick yeah. Four. I love John Wick. Orville. But Orville is a is is a parody. It's not a parody, really. It's an homage it's to like Star chat. Trek. Homage. Yeah, and, and when it got into its, I think what was the third year was it or fourth year? The yeah, last right. year, whatever the, the last, last year was, yeah. it became really good. Because, I haven't gotten them because yet. it found its gotten. own voice, and the stories mm -hmm. they were telling were better stories than they ever had on Star Trek. It's so good. Yeah, yeah, it's a very good it's show. In my, right? I went and wasted my time and saw Cocaine Bear yesterday. Oh, I, <laughs> well, I found a copy of it online, and this uh, is funny because I only I got through the first fifteen minutes of it. I couldn't. I, 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 it was yeah. It's not any better after that. I went. I went to get a, a stereo put in my truck down in Salinas. Mm -hmm. they, went, they they had a the, the theater right next door, mm -hmm. and the guy had delayed it a little bit because I was going to kill some time in the mall. And I said, oh, well, as long as it was delayed. And I looked over there and it said cocaine bear and it said, ah, oh, what the hell? What the hell? Was it? It give, me the, give me the uh, matinee old man's price. You know, it was six bucks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so I said, what the hell? I go in there and I bought my popcorn. I sat there and watched freaking 25 minutes of trailers. Oh, yeah. 25 yeah. minutes. 
And I'm going, when is the damn movie going to start? I'm about ready to fall asleep already. By that, by that time, your car was right. ready. <laughs> yeah, right. they had, yeah, they had the recliner chairs mm -hmm. and the whole bit. And I've never been in one of those because I don't the go to heater, the heater. The heater, everything. They had all that crap. A little table that comes around. They had a full bar if you wanted to buy, you know, beer, mm -hmm. I guess beer and wine. But they had all that stuff. And then this movie started and I went, holy shit, are you kidding me? And there was three of us in the theater. By the time I left, I was the only one there. <laughs> Did you watch the whole thing? Yeah, because I had nowhere else to go. Oh, because because uh, I couldn't get past 15 minutes on that picture. I had nowhere else to go, so I just sat there and I just... And you by know, the way... Was, people it, were texting me and shit. As <laughs> we know, it's like all good movies. It was based on a true story. Yeah, yeah it was. <laughs> there was actually a bear somewhere. I can't remember where. Uh, Chattanooga, Tennessee, Ch Chattanooga. And there Chattanooga. was like a truck full of cocaine that somebody yeah. had, and it spilled all over wherever. No, it was up on an airplane, oh, and really? that crazy dealer tried yeah. to, you know, throw it all out, and then he was going to jump out and gather it all up again. That's what it was, yeah. And he whacked his head when he was jumping out of the plane, and then when he came down, he was unconscious, so he hit the ground, slapped himself dead, yeah, and then... The bear found the cocaine. Yeah, and started eating people everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> it was not a funny story. It well, was it wasn't even pot. Think of the munchies he would have had if it was pot. Oh, oh my god, he's fucking nuts, man. He just, you know, the first person he gets is a, you know, a happy couple getting ready to get married, and he rips the head off and the leg off mm -hmm. and everything else. It's like, and it just went on from there. I mean, it, the thing is, the reason that movie's doing okay, it's got a incredibly funny title it's a very yeah. promising idea for a movie yeah and it was incredibly uh i guess you would say so far-fetched stupid funny mm -hmm. that i mean i could have walked out on it if i would have walked out on it if i had a place to go and i had a car to drive but you know it <laughs> i had to sit there the other movie that I hear is pretty good is on Netflix, and I've got to want to watch it. It's called Tetris. Mm. No, no, it's on Apple TV. It's called Tetris, and it's about the invention of Tetris. But there's some international espionage intrigue involved mm. in the creation of of, uh, of Tetris, and they say it's a very good picture. You know. So mm. anyway, hey, listen, hear that? That's our theme song, or what passes as a theme song. We can't hear it. Yeah, don't hear it. You don't hear it? No, no we've never heard it. No, never hear it. Oh, hear it. Hear a little bit. Oh, you can we hear it. Hear. Listen. Time. Can you hear that? Can you hear that? That's funny uh, because yeah. you heard all right. the other stuff I played. Brian can hear it because he's young enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's it for tonight. That's it for tonight, Jeff. Thank you so much for joining us. Good having you here. Of course, Kevin, great to have you for your review of Cocaine Bear. Uh, and uh, Charlie Wallace, glad to see your eye is healing. We never noticed there was anything wrong, but this is low definition yeah. Zoom, you know. Uh, Vernon, always nice to see you, my friend. I always feel warm and fuzzy when you're here. Alan, thank you so much for joining us. Ray, thank you. Uh, the funniest line of the night came to us uh, courtesy of uh, Wayne. Okay, thank you, Wayne. Appreciate You're welcome. The, 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 appreciate your humor, uh, Brian. Good having you here, and of course the lovely and attractive Tony. Everybody, everybody, uh, just uh, wave goodbye, and I'll wave goodbye at you and say good night, and uh, you can say good night to everybody too. There they go, folks. I better get myself on here before they get out of here. Uh, that's it for tonight. I'm Alex Bennett. The uh, intersection is next with Jack Bishop. He'll be here taking your calls on Skype at GabNet Live. That's the address, GabNet Live. I'll see you again tomorrow night, right here, back here, 1030, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Good night, everybody.